So I recently gave the BARC interview, BARC is Baba Atomic Research Center that's in India and for the post of OCS DGFS in 2021. So I recently gave the interview and before that I was just, I just gave the exam on 22nd September and then I was shortlisted, a list of shortlisted candidates were available on I guess on 10th October and then we also get our scorecard on 12th October and then we need to book our slots till 17th October. So after that I got my slot on uh, the date of 2nd November and then I actually did my interview but now I had a confusion should I share my experience. Now let me just tell you briefly when I was searching YouTube okay so I was searching about the bark chemical engineering interview chemical engineering interview questions interview questions so I just found out this and then I found out this video and actually watched this video this guy told a few questions and not the exact ones and then found out more such videos but no not more just one two three okay this is chemistry again some uh, short question this is just presented only one question then all these of chemistry mechanical and different stuff but where was chemical engineering just this stuff i said a uh, very uh, general topic but i thought i have recently faced the interview don't know will get selected or not but definitely i know the exact questions guys but then i just thought should i just make this video um, probably if i just check out that my own channel's videos so if i just check out my own channel's uh, views so what I see here is that uh, when I was searching or like when I was giving the bark exam actually so when I was giving the bark exam at that time I needed some questions so that some exact questions now I've searched about the, how the bark uh, chemical engineering questions but generally they went uh, the internet didn't have much questions, enough questions and not even exact questions. It was only a 2012 paper that was just available, that was exact, but we needed more exact questions. So after I gave the exam, the bar written exam, as you can see, I prepared three videos. And as you can see that these videos had the exact questions, but then you can still see the like to dislike ratio is still not 100%. So this actually made me think that do people really need these videos do we, do you guys even need the questions maybe i guess two dislikes are always there so maybe two people really didn't actually want this all videos they didn't want the questions uh, i don't know maybe but then i got the motivation the motivation to because of these 50 people and the motivation because of 21 people the motivation motivation of because of this 36 people and then I thought yes I'm going to make the video so that you get the information the exact information that might really help you just so when I was just fine trying to find out the questions in in Google so biochemical interview questions and then I found off the questions on Quora and then uh, thanks to Pankaj Sharma and others to say there were seven answers and they were quite great so <clears throat> these questions actually helped me a lot but the problem was that this was just uh, on to the in the year of 2016 and 17 and these were just old questions however also these were really helpful but the point is you need to read all of this stuff so maybe just people some people don't like reading much and maybe they might skip something but yes when it is in the form of a video people really like to watch it because it's kind of like a very visual experience but also this this whole thing, all these things were really uh, interesting and i would just like you to also go through this so i thought that why shouldn't we actually have videos on it because in youtube there is so much less material for this so now i just what i did is that i thought of just making it more interesting and to get you a better experience i thought i should make it a vlog plus interview questions kind of a mix and so that you get to know the environment and the way various things that you need to know while you are at bark okay and i hope you will just enjoy it uh, probably if you don't want such videos that's why if when i share the exact questions video some of you just didn't like it perhaps i don't know why because this kind of material are really not when i was just 
trying to find out questions i didn't find the exact questions so i that's why i just put up these videos so the main thing here is that i just want you to know is that if something is not available i just put those here and i hope they are helpful if not you can just comment out that uh no we don't need such information we don't need the exact information anyways let's start the first we let's have a view at the vlog and the vlog part is also important because you get to just get to know the whole environment it, it won't uh, take much time and then we will start the interview questions so guys let the trip begin and we i am now right at new delhi railway station and let's board the train So guys, I recently uh, did my paper. Uh, this is the train, and I, I, as you can see, uh, I did my test over here. So I did my quiz test over here in the train, and this is quite a great experience for me. Now let's begin. So this was the bar guest house and it was of 400 rupees for one day and also it was of three sharing so three people in one room and the balcony view is just amazing. guys that is the hostel and that is the entry point of the uh, guest house and hostel and this is the bar and hostel is in front of this nabi kya urja bhavan Guys, one best thing about Bark here is that the whole atmosphere, 
that you can see that I have mountains at my back and opposite uh, near to this place we have also the also the beach so and just see the greenery around here just so much fresh and so much exciting guys this is the main interview building so this is where you have to report and it's written also here so this is the main building hello guys so i have reached the airport just now and uh, it's uh, my flight is at 10:15 pm and now just waiting for the flight so my i just boarded on in the chhatrapati shivaji terminal uh, terminal 1 and now waiting for the flight g8 341 uh to delhi So guys let's now discuss the interview experience and the questions so with the we had to report at 8:30 am in the morning that in on 2nd november uh, and one important thing that i'm going to tell you is that reach at least at 8 am that would be better because many students will just try to come earlier as possible so the more early you reach the better it will be for you to actually your nervousness would also go away and the main thing is that you you will be able to complete your interview before lunch because it's always better to complete the info, interview before lunch uh, else as time goes on you might face some anxiety or nervousness so better to complete your interview before the lunch lunch is at 1 so before lunch and for that make sure that you because after we all assemble over uh, the uh, multi purpose hall the interview uh, venue what they do is they send uh, uh, line by line uh, they send the students into uh, the document verification hall where uh, we sit according to our uh, discipline the streams so mechanical somewhere then uh, near them chemical then near them electrical this kind so everyone is seated there and then they give us some forms to be filled so a q form was there an option form and also the ta form the travel allowance form so all these forms need to be filled and also make sure that you have all the Uh, required documents like all the original certificates that they have asked for and also the photocopy of so make sure that you have the percentage the cgpa to uh, percentage conversion certificate photocopy also because many students didn't have that had that have that and they had to go to the shop and the shop opens up quite late the photocopy shop opens up around like 9 or 9:30 so or even 10 sometimes so do, not much sure but so that's why i'm telling you take all the original documents and the the it will be easier for you for your document verification if you have all the documents and the photocopies even if you are traveling with flight or train you should have the tickets and the boarding pass of the flight and also it should be there like the payment should be mentioned uh, a payment slip should be also there and also lastly the main thing is that you should actually have a blank check or a photocopy of a blank check or the front front page of your passbook so bring that to the photocopy because i am telling this because many students didn't have some of the other 
uh, thing and that's why they their interview got delayed however when we all sit down there the the main thing is that then after filling the forms and stuff they will guide you okay so don't fill the form in a hurry try to read and if you have any doubt you can just go and ask them okay they will help you after filling form try to fill your form uh, first and try to arrange all the documents because the document verification takes a little time because in, in fact in chemical it took more much time because the sir the, the coordinator who was just doing uh, the document verification so one person document verification could go as long as like even 20 30 minutes even more so that's why for uh, there were so many candidates so i will tell you that uh, try to make sure you have all the documents required so now after the document verification was done then we will send to so they had some directions the arrows so where you have to go where you, so arrows were there for the interview venue from that particular building we went to a different building where the interview was conducted in small rooms and there uh, my interview was the first in in the chemical and so after some uh, after some time there like uh, waited for like 10 20 minutes there also we had to wait because the committee was pre uh, just gathering everyone was coming up and they were discussing and then they told me to come so when i just entered the room now the interview main begins so when i just entered the room i will tell you the exact details so when i entered the room then i told them good morning good morning sir good morning ma'am there were six six panel members there so six panel members two on the left two in the middle and two on the right so the main two were in the front uh, one ma'am was there and one sir that was probably the chairman and so the chairman welcomed me and told me that uh, okay so you are Sathak Roy and how are you and how did you come here so he will just ask you some very very basic questions in the beginning just your introduction just to make you uh, yourself comfortable then he will just tell he asked me uh, so uh, where did you do the your graduation and he also asked me about the online so main thing is that he asked me about the online semester how it went over the last two years uh, because of this covid pandemic he asked my opinion about it and how i adjusted to it what i feel about it maybe this this all conversation is just to just make the person relax and comfortable but also to actually maybe know uh, what the person thinks about uh, the present scenario so don't know uh, just uh, a very light talk and after that they told me that uh, they asked me that do you know what we are going to ask you in the interview so also I had actually gone through various the Quora thing that I told previously that they will just tell me ask me about four or five subjects so I told them that yes uh, some of my seniors told me that we will just ask four or five subjects that I have to mention and then you will ask questions about it so then then the main thing started and now what they asked me just because there was a blackboard okay so they were sitting uh, there and uh, up, up far away from there around from the at the at the other end of the room uh, there was a blackboard and they told me so write down the subjects or uh, towards the right of the blackboard so listen very carefully what they are telling some of my friends uh, wrote the subjects in the middle of the blackboard so listen very carefully i wrote them at the right and then they just told me to write in the short forms so i wrote cre my subject uh, my subject uh, priority was cre 
then heat transfer then mass transfer then fluid mechanics so in whatever order you tell they will ask in that order and your first two subjects are the most uh, important because they will ask maximum i think 80 percent question from that two subjects okay so first from the cre they first asked me a very basic question like how many types of reactors are there so so i told them that there are basically two types of reactor ones the batch reactor and the continuous reactor and in continuous reaction we reactor we have plug flow reactor and continuous stirred tank reactor so then they asked me a very 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 uh, awkward question like or not awkward but a very strange question that what is titration reactor so if you know about the titration reactor you can comment down but actually i didn't find it even in the internet so maybe they want to just see how you would think about it okay what could be a titration reactor okay so i told them about a lab experiment that i conducted in my lab that what we had is like so we had a uh, in a lab that we had a reactor like a stirred tank reactor and some input was coming and it was carrying some acid and after with with some water probably and then it was going out and after some time so after some time uh, what we do is like we collect it and then with a particular amount of base and we see how much after what time this will actually like if we put some indicator color indicator like the phenolphthalein with a base here so we can find out at what point is the titration point and according to that we will get the concentration uh, with respect to time so i told them about this experiment but then they just asked me like what is this beaker what is this beaker actually in which you are con doing the titration what is this beaker is this a reactor Can, could it be a reactor so i told them that if if they are talking about this beaker itself then something is just coming it drop by drop like this drop by drop coming up and i'm mixing it so it's kind of a it's kind of semi batch reactor because nothing is going out here nothing is going out only uh, inlet is coming and we are we might stir it so this is semi batch reactor and they then just uh, told me okay uh, they they just said okay they won't say uh, yes or no so after this think about it what could be a titration reactor okay what is a titration reactor we all know that what is titration we all know that with titration we get the concentration but what could be this type of reactor a pfr or a cstr but we are just stirring it so it it would be like a batch reactor a semi batch reactor with a stirrer so kind of a cstr but the outlet is not there so remember this part okay and then they just asked me uh, they gave a question on a piece of paper so what they gave me is this this part is that so let me draw it now this was a question that they gave me on a piece of paper 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 so they gave me a one upon minus ra versus xa plot and this plot was like going up like this then coming down and then this it was like this plot they gave it on a piece of paper only okay like same plot plot so they told me if okay if we want our conversion till 0 0.4 what kind of reactor would be would actually we will prefer so first they asked me that what how do we actually select the type of reactor 
uh, if we have this kind of graph so obviously it's very simple that we need the minimum volume we need the minimum volume and that would be our uh, favorite reactor now they asked me what could how to find out which is the re minimum volume reactor using this curve so main thing is that when we plot like if we have volume we can see dxa upon minus ra so this area under the curve is volume or even if this is for pfr even if that is for uh, this is proportional i'm saying there are some other terms here don't worry uh, so even this also tells us about that if we just multiply these two like the area under this curve will actually give us the volume now now this volume uh, area under this curve will give the pfr volume so if we use a pfr we will have this area okay but if we use an mfr or cstr we actually find this final point and this till here this whole area so this area would be actually extra so for minimum volume we need the minimum area that's the pfr now they told me if we have conversion till 0 0.8 what would be the best possible reactor combination or reactor so main thing is that after this if we use here cstr i told them if we use a cstr we only need this much area so we need here a cstr then after this if we use uh, a pf or pfr and we have this area we are use a cstr we have this area why do we need this area we just need only the area under the curve this would be the best optimal reactor combination now they told me again and again after every answer they told me this are you sure this was this was the like favorite line that they told me again and again are you sure are you sure so are you sure this is the correct well this is correct actually i know this and even most of you already know but they will just even ask are you sure so pfr followed by a csr then a pfr then they told me to plot the rtd curve so obviously what we have here is that we have a pfr and then we have a CSTR and then we have again a PFR this PFRs uh, let's say P1 P2 and C so this PFRs will actually create a lag of tau1 if these are all ideal tau tau1 tau this will create tau2 let's say tau3 these are the space times and these tau1 and tau2 will create a lag the pfr and then if we plot the rtd it would look like this okay so we have a concentration coming out as a function of time so at time is equal to t tau 1 plus tau 3 tau 1 plus tau 3 we will after because this is just creating a time lag after that a time lag we'll see that a concentration would come because of this cstr here also the tau1 so this is the pfr line and after that if a cstr is there so slowly and gradually some concentrations will try to come okay so i told them that this would be the uh, the c curve and in fact the e curve this would be the rtd curve okay and rtd of a cstr is uh this yeah. RTD of CSTR is e to the power minus t upon tau upon tau this is tau 2 okay so at uh, t where here this will point will be like 1 upon tau 2 so this from this curve they told me to draw this so this was really interesting I but they again ask everything like are you sure are you sure so what do you guys think is this correct or not even if not correct then surely tell me that what would be the right answer now then after all these things they 
uh, this was the CRD part it went around for like 20 minutes I guess approximately uh, when you enter the room interview room you really don't get an idea of how much time it is taking so these were the exact questions that asked me then they move on to HT heat transfer and in heat transfer they first asked me how what are the types of heat transfer so types of heat transfer and then they asked me their equation so one equation we know in fact I will, for all the three equations were like this k dt upon dx this is for conduction q upon a is equal to h delta t for convection q upon a is epsilon f f12 and sigma t1 t14 minus t24 for radiation so i wrote this all equations for conduction convection and radiation then after writing all this they know in fact speci specifically that people don't actually know this equation well so this on this equation they spent about like 15 to 20 minutes so what they asked me is that what is this epsilon what is this area so can you just show with some example what how radiation is occurring so i told them that these with let's assume two balls okay one at t1 and one at t2 radiation going from here to t2 and this is the equation that will govern it then they asked about all these things what will be this area is this area of this or this area or some area uh, in between this some part of the area or will it on what is this f12 what is the view factor what how does view factor uh, depends upon all this what is the epsilon this is is okay this is msivt which msivt msivt of 1 or msivt of 2 then they asked me that if this is a particular distance let's say 1 meter what will happen if we increase the distance to 2 meter 2 meter apart what will happen if this sphere is reduced in size a smaller sphere so these all things they ask me so if you know the answer you can just surely tell me here and okay this one i will give it for you to think about okay so this this the whole the radiation part was there then they asked me about the if this is a air in air or in vacuum also this is to be specified okay now they asked me about the real life example i told them about like if we have a molten metal uh, and above near it a different metal so this metal would actually uh, radiate and it will just heat up the other metal mol molten metals because molten metal are just spherical in shape uh, if we just put them drop by drop so uh, after that they said okay you can actually give the example of sun and earth but then they would just might even go in depth and ask a lot a lot of things on that so it's up to you now the main thing is that what would happen uh, now they gave me a shell and tube heat exchanger problem so what uh, what are passes in shell and tube heat exchanger and draw one two pass one two pass shell and uh, tube heat exchanger so one two pass so and now they ask me that what is this one what is this two is this one of one tube or this is this tells about the tube so they asked about this so and now i clearly didn't know that uh, if because some in some 
part i have seen that this one is of tube one tube pass and in some books i have seen it's like this two defines the tube like this is t or s or this is s or t which one is correct ts or st this shell pass one shell pass or it's one shell tube a uh, one uh, tube pass so also i give this question to you is this ts or st like one is one by two so i told them if they are talking about one tube pass and two shell pass then it would be like this we have a division around the shell and baffles and this will go around like this and okay this will be like here and then what we have is this will go again here and out so shell will have two pass here going here one one pass then i am coming back so two pass and the tubes will only have one pass so coming here and going out and then they talk about two two and two four drawing all of them and then again again and they will just repeat the same dialogue that are you sure are you sure okay then what they asked me is that so they were just going in depth like why we need the pass okay so i told them to increase the velocity then they why or what would happen if this velocity is increased so i told them the heat transfer coefficient uh the heat transfer will increase how heat transfer coefficient will increase okay how do we measure this velocity what could be a measure of this velocity and how to know the pattern so we have reynolds number we have the pass so that we increase the velocity and create also turbulence we have these baffles for turbulence too so then again they were just asking the same question are you sure okay this went on and like after that the the ht was finished so up from mt like the mass transfer and they asked me what is uh, okay what are the different types of packings in a packed bed have you seen any of packed bed so packings in packed bed what are the different types of packing so i told them that i know structured and random packing then they told me to give some examples okay so told told me asked me then asked me some out uh, examples okay so i wasn't actually getting to know but i told them about the rasching rasching rings and the pal rings okay so they were just uh, nodding their head just not saying if i am was correct or not then they told me that if the size of the packing if the size of the packing is decreased what would happen okay if the size of the packet the packing is decreased what would happen so i told them if the size would be decreased then we have more surface area we have more surface area a specific surface area so area upon mass would actually increase and now they ask me why this would increase because as we actually we when we make this uh, particle smaller what we are doing is if if the mass is constant what we are doing is we are having more area of the same like this part if this contains this all tubes we have we can see we have more area so that's the fundamental thing that we have if we divide this in smaller particles we have more area per unit mass the mass will be same but now we have more area so they told us me why mass should be same okay a very 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 deep question okay then they asked me what would happen so we should actually have very small uh, particles right if we if we have a better mass transfer when we have more uh, like less size of particles less area so why why should we actually not have very less particle size so i told them that if a particle size a very 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 small then what would it happen is that 
between these two particles there is some voidage and there is some space so that the fluid comes and moves through it but now the fluid will get struck and it will actually need to have more force actually go through pass through it in a more difficult manner that's why what will happen is that the pressure drop will actually increase okay so as the packing gets quite and quite compressed like quite and quite uh, it goes quite closer then the actually pressure drop will actually increase then they told me how can you calculate the pressure drop and I thought it was just rho g l l is the length of the packing and then it should be we also actually it's not completely this thing we have some voids in between so we should actually have 1 minus epsilon 2 okay if this epsilon or e let's say e is the voidage so 1 minus voidage is the amount of the volume that is of the solid um, so after this we we have this rho g l into 1 minus epsilon this is the fluidization uh, also formula used and now we have next thing is that the now they connected mass transfer and fluid after this like they were moving to the fluid directly because this actually pressure drop now they move to the fluid directly that's the last topic and they asked about the velocity profile of an ideal fluid so ideal fluid what is an ideal fluid okay the velocity profile now I thought that this ideal fluid is actually a type of fluid that would be inviscid, incompressible, that kind of fluid. So obviously if this is in inviscid, this, this wall won't actually affect the fluid. So this would actually mean that actually all the fluid streams are of at the same velocity here. So this would be like a straight line. So I told them this and then they told me what does this arrow denotes i told them that this denotes the direction then they told me why are the arrows of the same length i told them because every velocity is same this arrow the length of arrow gives us the magnitude of velocity okay now they told me if now this is a viscid uh, fluid like a viscous fluid what would happen obviously a boundary layer would be developed in a circular pipe this is all a circular pipe and after a length it will be fully developed so they told they again just if every other answer i told them they just tell ask this are you sure then a boundary layer would be developed and from both sides and they don't won't even tell you if this is right or wrong okay even not given give you a hint that it is wrong or right I don't know if this is right or wrong but I just answered this I I'm telling absolutely honestly what comes here boundary level develop, develops and then it becomes fully developed so after fully developed what will be the profile obviously it will be a parabolic profile everyone knows that and then they told me that after this this let's say the pipe ends up here and it is now open now what will happen what will happen to this fluid so obviously it it should actually move like this and slowly and gradually it should expand like this so draw the velocity profile here too okay then they asked me uh, that okay you have drawn this uh, you have done this uh, what are actually vortices and can the vortex appear here at the end can there be vortex here so a very deep questions that they ask so these are the questions that they asked me and i hope you get the whole idea of what kind of questions they ask these are the exact questions they asked me and my interview went for 45 minutes now a lot of people told me that this is very less time you should actually have if your interview goes on till one hour only then only selection chances of selection are high but let's just see what happens i i just try to give my best so guys 
that was the whole experience the vlog and if you haven't watched the vlog you can you should actually watch it because you will really like it like the whole experience was amazing okay and that's why i made the vlog out of out of it also the questions that you seen i think you have got to know what questions exact questions that they asked in fact me if you want more questions that were asked to my peers so just subscribe and like the channel so that i can actually uh, give you more and more information more and more exact information and also 45 minutes uh, i think 45 minutes my interview went people were some people had doubt like uh, is this sufficient will people will be selected of if they interview because people think that the into if the interview goes for long then only there are chances of selection but let's just see what happens i i really don't know if i will be selected or not but the main thing is here is that helping you uh, guys out so that you have the information and then this will actually help you know what kind of things they ask so i don't really know what will happen even i don't need to think about it because the main thing is the whole experience guys the experience was amazing okay talking to the whole panel and actually facing the interview facing these kind of questions that can actually help you to think beyond what is in the books so that is important selection or not it depends if they find me or even you when you give your interview if they find you that okay this is a kind of person we can actually uh we actually want if they want you if they want that kind of person then only they will select you doesn't matter if you know a lot of things doesn't matter if you are a rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 it only matters if they need that kind of person that you are then only you will be selected so just chill guys just don't take much stress i'm saying just focus on your very basics and the depth see every formula and what each and everything in that formula try to go deeper inside the formula how it came how it should be and what changes could be what are the different uh, parameters in the formula okay so that what is that was it guys i hope you liked it so please like uh, and i hope no one actually uh is there around that who doesn't want these kind of videos okay guys all the best